Hey everybody, it's Marcus. Welcome back for our June 2023 monthly update for our Tesla solar panels and power wall system. Summer is here. It's going to be 110 degrees today and we had our first virtual power plant event last night. So summer is really heating up. We have an exciting month of updates here, so I hope you enjoy. Now one of the first things I'm going to get into is that ever since we had our system installed two years ago, I've always wanted to test the limits of the system. I finally had a chance to do that when my wife and daughter were out of town, so I made a little video just seeing how much the system could do. Uh, not sure if I'm gonna do this in a you know full-on video separately later, if I'm just gonna do this in one of our monthly updates, but here's a little preview. Hope you enjoy. Now I know I've been talking about drive on solar for the past couple months, but I'm really excited for it. One of the updates that I have this month is that our Model Y just updated to 2023.26.1, which is the update for the car that's necessary for the drive on solar update. Now we also have to do the phone update to 4.22.5, and we also have to upgrade the Powerwall firmware, which uh, this month just updated to 23.12.2, for drive on solar, it's gonna to have to go to 23.12.10, I believe. So I'm just gonna to have to keep an eye out for that. Hopefully that's here soon. I'm just really excited for drive on solar. Just such a good idea and I'm very excited to see it implemented. Now this one might be a little bit confusing. Now we didn't have any virtual power plant events in June, uh, but we did just have one in July here because I make these updates a couple weeks later. I'm just gonna mention it here we had a 48 minute virtual power plant event that was kind of a surprise. It looks like the uh, California grid operator basically announced that they were having an energy emergency alert at about 7.30 p.m. last night. And at about 8.12 exactly, the uh, alert for the virtual power plant event came through with Tesla and just immediately started discharging. Now, as you can see, we ended up discharging the usual about 15 kilowatt to the grid, which ends up being about $30 per hour. Now in this particular event, and you can see with the new graphs here, they made it super easy because now there's a spot where you can see, hey, how much did I send back to the grid? Boom, right there you have 11 kilowatt hours. So that 48 minute event last night, we made a cool $22 just doing absolutely nothing. It's really just an awesome thing about virtual power plant events. Hoping to see more of them here. I'm guessing we are gonna see a bit more uh, you know, it's supposed to be 110 basically this entire weekend, so they're probably going to start ramping up here. Now, for those of you that want to join a virtual power plant event or get a solar panel system, make sure you sign up using my referral link down below. Tesla just requires a $100 deposit. They'll come out and do all the work up to the city inspection for $100. That's all you have in it. So have them come out, do a site assessment, make sure your house is perfect for solar panels or batteries. Make sure it's everything you need and all you have in it until you pass city inspection and your system turns on is $100. Uh, if you need it down below, use my referral link. Come join the revolution here. Now let's take a look at the data. We'll start off here taking a look at house usage. In May, we were at 1,266.3 kilowatt hours. In June, that was up to 1,327.6 kilowatt hours. Our average daily use went up from about 41 kilowatt hours in May to 44 kilowatt hours in June. That's pretty much an expected bump. The AC is getting run more. I mean, it's gonna be 110 out here, so. It just adds up. We're just running it more and more every day. Make sure you're changing your AC air filters. Uh, run it as efficiently as possible, especially these days when it's running almost constantly. Now, um, with the heat here, our cars, our EVs are actually using more. We're maybe not driving more, but um, they're using more to keep their cabins cooler during the summer when it gets extremely hot. So we're using more and more for our cars to charge them. Now, this past month, we used a about 410 kilowatt hours to charge both the Model 3 and the Model Y at home here. That is about a third of our house usage for the month, which is right in line with how May was. Um, now, the surprising thing is looking at June last year. June last year, we used 1719.2 uh, kilowatt hours, and this is a huge decrease this year, where we used 1327.6 kilowatt hours. 
that's about 400 kilowatt hours in a month. And I think I can explain away two things on this. One, I just don't think it was as hot this past June. We did get some hot days here, but it just wasn't as bad as last summer. And the thing that I think makes a big difference is we had a little uh, pool set up outside, like outdoor pool, and that pool pump ran at about 500 watts and just ran constantly throughout the day. So that was an additional 12 or 15 kilowatt hours per day. That adds up, you know, it's 300, 350 kilowatt hours. So I think that's likely why our uh, house usage was so much lower this past year. Let's take a look at solar production here. In May, it was 2135.2 kilowatt hours. In June, it was 2227.1 kilowatt hours. Now that's about a 5% or so increase. June was a good month, really didn't have any weather, just a lot of sun, not really any clouds or rain. We averaged about 69 kilowatt hours per day of solar production in May. That was up to 74 kilowatt hours in June. Our highest production day was 82 kilowatt hours. That's pretty, pretty awesome. Now keep in mind that June 21st was the summer solstice. So that is gonna be your longest day of the year and you would expect that to be your most solar production uh, you know, for the year. Basically, as you know, the summer goes on past June here, your solar production is going to start to ramp down. You're also going to see as it gets hotter here that the heat can actually decrease the efficiency of your panels. So it is normal to see on a supremely hot day, 5 to 10 percent lower uh, solar production numbers than you're used to. Now, looking at June of last year, we produced 2,351.3 kilowatt hours. We have had those Canadian wildfires this June, uh, you know, around for a while. And I'm wondering if there's some sort of haze just way up above us that's hampering our production. We also have had kind of a weird, slightly chillier temperature pattern here. So I'm not really sure what's going on. Our production numbers just aren't as good as last year. Um, last year we peaked at 88.8 kilowatt hours. Again, only 82 kilowatt hours here. Don't think it's really a big deal. I think it's likely the weather or something, you know, up there, but um, just something to keep an eye on. Taking a look at Powerwall statistics here for May and June, they're pretty close relatively. Uh, May was 524.8 kilowatt hours discharged, and June that was 572.9 kilowatt hours discharged. That's an increase of about two kilowatt hours on average per day, only using about 19 kilowatt hours though on average still, which is less than half of our Powerwall's capacity. Now this can be explained away with AC. Now June was more of a temperate month that we didn't have as many of these crazy, you know, over 100, 110 heat days. Um, so we just weren't using the AC as much. So I would expect that number to be much, much higher if it was a hotter month. Now you can kind of see that if you look at June 2022's data where we discharged 722.9 kilowatt hours. Um, but basically, even so with a hotter month there and also with the you know, pool pump going that would have been running overnight, we only were averaging about 60% of those power walls. So you still have plenty of capacity on normal days. Now let's take a look at net grid use here. Now one of the things to point out is last year in May we had 780.8 kilowatt hours sent back to the grid. In June here that was 830.3 kilowatt hours. That's an impressive 27.7 kilowatt hours sent back to the grid every day for the month of June. Now you wouldn't expect that number to be higher than May because you know it's getting hotter, the AC is running more, but we also generated about 100 kilowatt hours more than we did in May. Also keep in mind from showing you those charging stats for our cars, we're actually only charging the cars at home this past month. So even with both of those cars charging purely at home, we're still sending back more to the grid. Now, I did have an oopsie where we needed to use the batteries on those cars in the next, you know, the next morning and needed them full got a little overzealous and we touched the grid for a little bit, which I normally don't do. We only used about six kilowatt hours or so, which not a big deal, but I try not to use the grid when I don't have to. Oops. 
Um, but basically, let's look. And last year, we were at 543.2 kilowatt hours back to the grid. Now, that's a 50% increase year to year from June here to June last year of sending that uh, electricity back to the grid. You know, 543.2 versus 830.3. Now, at the end of the day, though, I mean, those couple hundred kilowatt hours are only going to add up to a couple bucks, probably like five or six dollars um, with those, you know, excess credits that we get. So I'm actually kind of trying to look around the house and see what we can switch. Maybe it's time to look at a heat pump water heater, uh, you know, or something, you know, a different AC system that's uh, maybe a, a heat pump to more efficiently use the electricity and not use natural gas as much. We are, you know, in June here, about negative 2,500 uh, kilowatt hours to the grid. So we have plenty of space to kind of expand. Maybe that's a bigger car in the future that's less efficient. We'll just have to see. But we do have some room to run. Now, last month, you might remember, I kind of was unhappy about the uh, self-sufficiency numbers. We were at 99%, but I thought it was kind of cheap because that 1% from the grid didn't really count. Now, this 1% that I earned this month, the 99%, I totally earned this one. That was the 6 kilowatt hours that I used from the grid when I got a little overzealous. Not a big deal. Um, basically, from solar this month is 56%. It was 58% last month and 43% from power walls this month where it was 41% last month. We're still our own energy providers just using maybe a quarter's worth of electricity from uh, PG&E over the past month. We don't pay PG&E any of their peak rates, which are approaching 50 cents per kilowatt hour, even as the temperatures are approaching 110 here. We're just paying that minimum charge, and that is what's awesome about a power wall and solar panel system. Again, if you'd like to join us, stop paying that money to PG&E and hopefully start paying it towards yourself. Just go ahead and use my referral link down below. Uh, we'll be back next month with an awesome update. Hope you enjoy. Have a good one.